Hey guys, we've got something really special tonight. So I don't, uh, J.O., have we ever done a, a panel at Man Camp? Has there ever been a panel? Not many times. Maybe Do one. we have a mic, a second second mic to pass down for these guys? Is it going to be, or am I using that one? So while we're getting mic'd up, um, I was just thinking back to some of the conferences that I've attended that have done panels, and those have been some of the most powerful nuggets and takeaways, and we thought for this man camp on legacy to hear from different generations, different experiences. You know, we all learn from experience, but how many of you know it doesn't have to be your experience? I hope tonight or even this weekend you're already, I was down at the dock talking to somebody today and just asking them, hey, what's been your biggest takeaway so far? Because we're absorbing a lot. There we go. Check, check. We're absorbing a lot, but I, it only takes one gold nugget to change your life. It only takes one gold nugget to change your family's life, to change your legacy. One revelation. I, I remember sitting in a class one time and, the, and the, the, uh, the speaker, the pastor said, you know, information can change your thoughts, but revelation will change your life. And I've been looking forward to this panel. There are about to be some nuggets dropped tonight. And you like chicken nuggets? <laughs> so uh, I'd like to welcome our four men to the panel. And uh, I, I'm going to have them introduce themselves. Gentlemen, I'm going to give you guys a, a minute to give us your name and your age, a little bit about your family. You now, married with kids, uh, a brief snapshot of your testimony, maybe just when you, when you got saved, and uh, what you did or what you do for a living. And we'll start with Derek. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name's Derek Miller. I'm 39 years old, uh, married to my wife, Erin, for 17 years. Uh, I've got four kids. You guys have met Micah, 13, uh, Levi's 12, Noah is, uh, he just turned 10 yesterday, and then we got our seven-year-old daughter, little, uh, little Keely Bear. So um, I was raised Catholic. My parents got divorced when I was five. Um, I, I feel that I, I always believed what I needed to believe, but no one ever took the time to walk me through it. Uh, and so it wasn't, I didn't get uh, saved until I was 19 years old. I was standing on the side of a college softball field watching my girlfriend, who's now my wife at the time, play. And uh, her, her dad walked me through it, asked me some, asked me the basic questions. And you believe in God? Yes. You believe Jesus, Son of God? Yes. Walked me through it. It was on that day on the side of that softball field that wow. I got, uh, that I got saved. So with someone just taking the minute to do it. So um, I used to be in sales. I was a police officer for a little over 10 years, got uh, medically retired from that, and I'm back in, uh, back in sales for the last few years and uh, shortly moving into something different in the uh, financial world. Beautiful. Yeah, my name is Ben Taves. I'm 46 years old, been uh, married to my wife, Alicia, for 24 years. We have five children. Nice. Blessed with five. My, my son... He'll ask me, Dad, are we wealthy? And I'm like, I got five kids. We're very wealthy. <laughs> That's what wealth is. Yes, guys. amen. So, um, let's see. My testimony. I, uh, I was raised in a Christian family. Uh, I, remember, uh, I remember when I dedicated my life to God, I, was, uh, I got severely dehydrated when I was 10 years old and I was in the hospital and they thought I had appendicitis. And so I thought I was going to die. And when you're 10 years old and you think you're going to die because they're telling you of appendicitis, you start making deals with God. So I made a deal. I said, I'll, I'll, I'll ser serve you my whole life. Just let me live. And uh, I was just dehydrated. So I lived. <laughs> but uh, but uh, awesome. I, uh, of course, I, I kind of, I'd say... I failed. I didn't serve him all my days. I walked away from him uh, in my teenage years and uh, rededicated my life to God when I was about, I don't have a specific date, but I was in my early 20s. And what was the last question? Uh, what you do or did? Oh, yeah. So I'm, uh, Something kind of I'm an entrepreneur. I love, I love business. I've um, been doing that for a long time. And right now, I'm a state senator for District 4, which is Coeur d'Alene. Come on! Thank you, Lord. That's it. We're not a full-time legislate 
legislature. It's just a part-time gig. It's uh, January through uh, March. I served down in Boise. Thank you. Beautiful. Nice. Love you, man. Good stuff. Yeah, one of my regrets is that I can't vote for Ben. Uh, <laughs> moved to the wrong place. Um, my name is Dave Schaff, and uh, I'm 66 years old. And uh, we have uh, my wife and I, Marla, have been married for 45 years, just a couple of weeks ago. Wow. Um, we have a couple of kids, three, actually. Three? Um, yeah. <laughs> I had to think about that. Uh, our oldest is down in uh, Phoenix, Arizona with um, my son-in-law, Joe, and they planted the first church plant out of Heart of the City, Come on. Uh, River City Church right on. Yeah. And, um, and then my middle daughter is still with us. She's an adult dependent, um, has a number of complications, and that's been an interesting journey. Um, and then uh, our youngest is uh, Angela and on the worship team here, and her husband Hunter's around here somewhere. Where's Hunter? Back there. So my son in love. Um, so anyway, I'm delighted to be here. You know, I wasn't always delighted to be in the house of God. And, uh, you know, I grew up in, in a family that, that uh, loved God and taught the word, um, but kind of from a distant place. I don't know if any of you guys can relate to that. It's sort of like your personal faith and you know, you do what, what you do you kind of a thing. And I did me uh, for a few years and it wasn't going the right direction. And then I met Jesus. And that's as simple as that. I just met Jesus. And you know, as I look at the word, I don't see anybody who's ever met Jesus whose life didn't change. That's right. Some way or another. Right. They may have hardened their, their, their heart against him and rebelled or, you know, rejected him. But something's got to happen. Because that's just how big Jesus is. Amen. Yeah. What do you do? Oh, I'm a relationship coach. Come on. <laughs> I'm Roger Halverson. I'm older than dirt. Love this guy. I'm, I'm 85. <laughs> 85. I was raised in a, in a godly home. I love and I was raised, pulled up in a godly church. <laughs> and I got away from the Lord in my teen years and in March 1963 I came back to the Lord mm -hmm. of that same time in 1977 I discovered who I am in Christ Wow! Amen. and wow. the excitement is so great that it took me into full time ministry I've been a pastor for 44 years Wow! eight of those oh, years I was a bishop for over 47 churches Wow. Right now, they say, are you retired? I haven't got time. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, by the way, we've been married 63 years. Wow. <laughs> Come on. That's awesome. oh, you had to one-up me. <laughs> this is so good. So, hey, this uh, this afternoon we did sm we had small groups, and we did an exercise to define some kingdom vision. How many of you guys enjoyed the small group? You just get some clarity. I like it because it helps us put some guardrails in place from sabotaging and really just to you know use things as a filter. So it, we, we keep it in the forefront. So gentlemen, I'd like you've got two minutes. Okay, we're not gonna you know try to keep it keep it to two minutes. If you could just me mention your three musts and your three refu refusals. Uh, but if you could go into depth on one and why, we'd love to hear that. Yeah, I'll start with the refusals so we can get those out of the way because we don't like those. So um, a few of the, the, there were a lot of good ones that came up in our group. But uh, as I was thinking through this, three refusals for me are uh, divorce, complacency slash laziness. Don't call me lazy. Uh, and, and dishonesty. So those are, are three things that I absolutely refuse to have as part of my legacy. Um, the must. So in, in our family, we have core values. Uh, just like a just like the big companies do so mission statement and core values for our family And so this this part was uh, stuff that we had already uh, already talked through so for me uh, integrity being present and intentional and uh, Probably the funnest one and my favorite one is outrageous generosity. So, mm, so um, When I talk about outrageous generosity and we talk about it with our kids we teach it to our kids um, how we live that out we define outrageous generosity as generosity that is so outrageous 
it truly shocks the conscience wow. of the person that you're impacting and the people around it. So outrageous generosity is powerful. It changes the atmosphere around us and the heart within other people. It shocks the conscience. It is kingdom, giving to people what they have not earned and they do not deserve. And most of all, it's fun. Wow. So good. Amazing. So I'm going to cheat really quick. I'm going to take 30 seconds because God told me to do something. Uh, I, had a, I had a tough conversation with a young man just a, a few minutes ago, maybe an hour ago. And uh, I thought he exemplified what we were talking about earlier and what, what it looks like to be a man. Um, I had to challenge him and uh, he just uh, responded with a lot of, res- just took responsibility for his actions. Mm. And I think it's really hard when you're a young man to take responsibility for your actions. So I just wanted to recognize Ricky. If you'd stand up for just a second. Ricky took responsibilities. He's acting like a man, guys. All right, so I'm going to blow through my musts and try to make up some time. Must, number one, value what God values, love what God loves. Uh, Practical got to be in the word to do that Mm. one way that i've done that throughout my life because it's always a struggle in different ways different seasons to be in the word is at one point i um i wouldn't eat breakfast i wouldn't have bread until i had some of the bread of life Mm. so i wouldn't eat until i'd read my bible and that that was like one way to develop a discipline um next one seek first his kingdom yes Um, one fear, there's only one fear that we have, guys. That's the fear of God. That's the beginning of wisdom. Refusals, pleasure chaser. I'm not a pleasure chaser. I'm not a man pleaser. Mm. Mm. So good. And I'm not a quitter. Good. I won't quit. I won't walk out of my wife. I remember one time when I was just married, I walked to the front door. I was really upset, put my hand on the door handle, and God said, do not walk out of that house. Mm. Mm. And That's I good. didn't, and I never will. Amen. Amen. Good. Wow. Good, so rich. Mm-hmm. Refusal. Gentlemen, refuse to quit. Yeah. Life comes at you so many different ways. Discouragement is going to hit every life in this place. There's no way to dodge the brokenness of this world. Don't quit. So that's really when it when it comes down to it that's like my number one just that's one refusal i love that, that ben picked up on that as well mm, it's good you can't nehemiah 414 if you if you 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 got to get a hold of this verse that so we don't fight a battle just for ourselves think about just in the in this quick moment think about the people in your life that have put something into your life because they didn't quit because they were there and just tell yourself i can't quit because i got to be one of those people the the must is really knowing god yeah people get to know god in all kinds of different ways i I mean one of my favorite ways to know god is just to be out in nature and just look at just what's there and marvel um and, and it just can come in so many different ways Whatever your way is for getting close to God, do it a lot. It has to include the Word. Because if you don't know God according to the Word, catch this, you'll judge Him. Felt like God gave me that for tonight. Just to throw that out there. That if if you have a place where you're judging God, maybe it's because you don't know Him. Wow. Wow. And That's you can get to know him. The word. The, the word from from the beginning to, to the end, if you haven't read the Bible all the way through and, and just kind of gotten that story, and there's so many different ways to get a hold of that now. You don't have to just be a reader and, and you know, go. Yeah. You can hear it audibly. There's a lot of different ways you can do it. But if you don't know God, it's just a bad scene. Because you're gonna you're gonna judge him. You're gonna end up thinking that he's promised things he didn't promise. You're gonna think that he 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 is against you when he's not. All those kinds of things. 
But if you look at the word, you'll discern that. You'll figure that out. You'll because you'll see God in action uh, throughout history. This is quite interesting to me because there's been some absolutes in my life that I've had that have guided my life. And I'd like to share it with you. I will not compromise my relationship with the Lord. Mm. I will not compromise my relationship with my wife nor my family. Mm. I will not compromise my integrity. I choose to walk a life free of unforgiveness. Mm. I strive to maintain a lifestyle in which I finish well. I've known a lot of guys that have finished, but I want to. I want to finish well. When I walk out of here, the only thing I want people to say is, "Hey, he finished well." Amen. 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 I get in front of Daddy, and he said, "Hey, well done." Yeah. 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 <laughs> I refuse. I refuse to do or watch anything that I could not do or watch in the presence of my wife. I'd even go so far as to say it's in the presence of my pastor. Mm. I refuse to be alone with a woman who's not family. Mm. I refuse to watch R-rated movies and TV programs. You say, why? Because they talk a language I don't talk. Mm. <laughs> wow. They do things that I've had to no interest in. Mm. I got a wife. I've had a wife for 63 years. You know what? She's the most incredible creature I could ever find. <laughs> Why would I insult her by watching something else? I refuse to allow fear to control my life and ministry. I refuse to compromise God's word. What's the most important? Integrity. Right. Integrity is like pregnancy. You either are or you aren't. Mm. Wow. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> That's a good word. That's a word. Wow. Wow. Integrity, integrity is saying no when no one else would ever know what you did. Right. Yeah. Wow. The trouble with integrity is once you just... A little, clo little closer. Much closer to your mouth. The microphone. Okay. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> once your integrity is compromised, you may be forgiven, rebuild your life, but the breaching of your integrity is never forgotten. Limiting you to being able to achieve the place you once walked. I've seen men who have fallen. Pastors who have fallen. They still stayed in ministry. But their ministry never came to the place that it was before they fell. Mm. You don't restore integrity. Wow. The other thing I would talk about is forgiveness. I've chose to have a life of walking in in forgiveness and not dealing with unforgiveness it's like cancer it eats at your soul it also eats at your body it'll either come out in your circulatory respiratory or digestive system it'll kill you and i've had some things that i i could carry as pain the things that have happened in my life and things that people have done to me and things that have ha happened. But you know what? I've got to stand before God one day and he's going to say, I had to forgive the people for what they did to my son. Why couldn't you forgive? Wow. That's good. Mm -hmm. And I want to stand there empty handed and said, I brought no baggage with me. Mm. Wow. Mm. Amen. 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 That's good. That's good. That's good. So good. Just one last thought. Mark eleven twenty four. I love twenty three. It says, "Speak to the mountain, cast it in the ocean." But he said, "Hey, dude." <laughs> well, no, he didn't really say that. I said. That. <laughs> he said, "But when you stand yes. to pray, 
forgive. Now, can I just be real pastoral here? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Can I be courageous enough to say, maybe the reason you're flipping mountain isn't out of the way is you're not walking in forgiveness because forgiveness will move your mountain faster than your mouth. Wow. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> I hope you're taking notes. <laughs> I am. I'm recording mine. <laughs> taking notes. Say disciple. 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 Say discipline. Discipline. I only went to junior college, but I think the first seven letters are the same. You cannot be a disciple without discipline. You know, I've never met anybody that's attained any success without being a man of discipline. And if we're going to be followers of Jesus who make disciples, we will not be effective unless we live disciplined lives. Would you agree? Yes, mm -hmm. So we must be resolute on what's important and not willing to compromise. That's been a word used many times this weekend on those convictions. One of the ways that you could say that is we often got, we have to give up what we might want in the moment for what we truly desire for our life, our family and our legacy. So, Gentlemen, I'd like to hear about a discipline that you have in your own life that helps keep your kingdom compass charted towards legacy. In addition to that, I'd like to know why. So one discipline in your life that keeps you charted towards legacy. Why do you do it? And did you pick that up from someone else or did you just come up with it on your own? I have two, but they're too important to skip one, so I'll talk fast. Um, so my first one is uh, I'm in the Word every single day. So that's something that I started. Um, actually, it was just last January. I'm, my wife would joke and tell you I'm a robot. I just have these disciplines, things I do, goals that I have, and Excel sheets and all this stuff. Um, and so one of the things I thought was important to add was to be in the Word every single day. Um, and so I started with, uh, it was actually on the heels of a, of a Pastor J.O. message about the Passionate Four. Everybody, I guess, but me knew about that. Um, and so I started the Passionate, passionate Four uh, last January 1st and didn't miss um, all year. And I thought, why, why, would I, why would I stop that at the end of that year? So um, I'm just continuing to be in my word every single day. And I, I got to tell you, men, that the word became alive for me like never wow. before. Amen. When I started doing that, I was reading stories like, did you know this? Talking to my wife, talking to my kids. I'm like, did you, you got to read the story in this, that, the other <laughs> thing. So um, a, a lot of fruit came out of that. Derek, tell them what it is. What's, what's, the, the, pa what's the, pa oh, oh, the, core, the passion for the core four. So Old Testament uh, chapter, New Testament, Psalm, and a proverb. Um, and so uh, my second discipline is uh, I've got, I started this at the beginning of this year, is every single day for at least two minutes, I've got a timer that I set and start. I sit and I shut up and I listen. And so it's be still and know that I am the God of the impossible. Wow. And so I sit and I just listen to what he's doing for the day, for me, uh, on, on the heels of a uh, Pastor Stephen message a couple weeks ago, felt like I was supposed to forgive somebody that was holding on to something um, in that time, and, and so I did. Um, and so I think that, uh, those things again are, are things that I, that I picked up from, uh, a couple of messages from pastors and, um, thought that that was good. So you guys know you're impacting other people and other people's yeah. legacies. So, Amen. Good. Good. so, uh, like you, a lot of you, I have a partner in, uh, in my life and, uh, one of the most, I'd say, amazing, um, common, like almost daily practices that I have is, uh, praying and, and going over priorities with my wife. And, uh, to answer the last question, the question early on, nobody told me to do it. I just screwed up really bad and, uh, tried to go my own way. And my wife was like, where are you going? And I'm like, well, why aren't you on the same page with me? And, um, and I realized that I, I wasn't spending enough time with her and I needed to make uh, that relationship uh, obviously to the importance level that it, that it is. And so uh, I would, I did have a mentor though that uh, during that time and he's like, he's like, uh, why are, I'm like, why doesn't she, why doesn't she understand? I'm like, I tell her we're, 
we should do this or we should do that and and what and why isn't she on board why isn't she on board with me and he's like did you take her on the journey with you and so uh i've been taking her on the journey with me um for a lot of years and we've dreamed together a lot mm. we've written things down we've watched miracles happen mm. over and over again wow. uh it's faith building and uh god gives you a partner mm. uh, for a reason and so yeah i encourage you guys spend that time with your wife pray with your wife dream with your right wife uh make her a priority in your life and um I can guarantee you'll accomplish way more than you could by yourself. Yeah, so good. It's really good. So I'm going to start with the why, uh, and hopefully it will become pretty evident how it's spilled out. But um, years and years ago, it was probably when my wife and I had only been married uh, a couple of years. We had one daughter, and I had a dream. And in the dream... Um, I was standing before Jesus Christ, and you know that's a that's a fairly humbling thing. And he asked me one question. He said, "Where are those I gave you?" And I paused, and I I in my dream I was seeing people whose lives I'd touched in ministry, kind of behind me, fanned out like people I'd led to the Lord or whatever, 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 whatever. And Jesus just simply looked at me and said again, but where are those I gave you? And I knew in, just internally and instantly that what he meant was, where's your wife? Where are your kids? And I just determined, it really has spilled out in a hundred different ways, but that intentionality of making sure that my my kids, if I if I if I was going to be a dad, I knew I was going to fail them, and I could tell you so many different ways I failed them. In fact, I wrote down like just instantly. God uh, took me back to some memories where I failed each one of my kids in you know potentially bad ways. Like I almost drowned my first daughter. Mm. Uh, I wasn't the perfect dad. How about you? But the intentionality of just making sure that they were more impressed with Jesus, more impressed with God than they are with me, has been kind of a discipline because it affects everything I do. If, I, if we're in a conversation and, and we're, we're having to work through something, I don't want to impress them with my wisdom or my, my you know, whatever because I don't have that much to impress them with. But I do want them to be impressed with God. I want them to impress, be impressed with how faithful He is. I want them to be impressed with how much He loves them. We used to have a little saying we would do, and at the end of the night, we, we'd, we'd lay down for bed, and, and it'd be, uh, so who loves you? Well, Daddy loves me. Mommy loves me. Grandma and Grandpa love me. And we'd get kind of through this litany, and I'd say, but who loves you? most of all just wanted them to hear them say jesus i know it doesn't sound like much of a discipline but find something that 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 you know it's such a big deal to you that your kids understand that it kind of lines up the other things that you do in a sense it's like a it's like a uh you know, the bowling alley. It's like going down that alley and everything everything kind of rolls out down that. So I don't know if that makes sense, but that that's my yeah. discipline. Yeah. My discipline has been pretty well set much of my, most of my life. For many years, I get up at 4 o'clock to get into the Word. Mm. I could spend three hours with the Lord. Wow. And my wife would join me somewhere in that period of time and we'd study together. <laughs> now my life is totally different since we're retired. And generally, pretty much the whole morning is taken up. We we're going through a program, going through the Bible in a, in, a, in a full year. We have different programs that we listen to, uh, mm. pastors, teachers that we listen to 
each morning. I have a I have some declarations that I read every morning that to me are very positive because it not only sets in the, in the spirit realm what's going to happen, but it refreshes in my mind what's going to happen, okay? Could I read one to you? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is the day the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. Didn't say I had to like it, but I have to rejoice in it. <laughs> I start every day with God by speaking life, health, strength, and vitality to my body because I know God's healing power is working within me. The nature and life of God are resi resident in my body, driving out all manner of sickness and disease. I am strong in the Lord and the power of his might. I believe the word of God above everything else, right. what I should think, feel, or see. His Beautiful. word says I have been redeemed from the curse of sickness. Wow. His word says that by Christ's stripes I have been healed. Beautiful. My body is free of pain, sickness, and disease. It mm. operates effectively, efficiently, free of malfunction of any kind. Every part of my body is functioning properly. Every organ, gland, system operating in conjunction with each operating with each other in perfect harmony, which is exactly how God designed my body to work. Yeah. My immune system is strong, vibrant, and healthy. Germs, bacteria, virus, and parasites cannot exist in my body. If any sickness or disease may attempt to try to attack my body, it is quickly destroyed by the power of God's Word working wow. in me. I boldly declare that I am healed, healthy, and whole. Amen. 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 Wow. Beautiful. Every so day. So good. Beautiful. Wow. So good. Keeps wow. getting better and better. These guys are uh, anointed. Yeah, and God is using them to influence different areas of culture, like business and politics, business for Ben and family and the church. But God's given every man here a gift. And I'm not just talking about these guys. God has put a gift in every one of you. And it's used to bring them glory. So the next question, gentlemen, is, what gift has God given you to bring glory, to bring him glory and to impact others? And how will your gift impact your legacy and his kingdom when you're no longer here? So I think the, uh, the biggest gift that God has given me to uh, steward is the ability to understand financial concepts with a kingdom mindset and the ability to teach and impart those concepts. Um, I, I know from talking to a lot of people about money that people don't like to talk about money. So um, I've facilitated financial classes at d previous churches. And then we moved up here. I, I did it at Heart of the City. And I know that people don't like to talk about money. Money fights are the, uh, the number one cause of divorce in marriages in this country. Um, but what I love to do, what I love to do is I love to shine my little light in those dark places. Yeah. I love to open up those places I have an ability to communicate with people to get their guard down and uh, be, be objective while being subjective and um, being brutally honest and digging into that and correcting those, uh, those issues. Uh, I believe it will uh, impact my legacy by leaving wealth to be used for his kingdom by future generations. I'm talking about kingdom wealth in the storehouses of heaven, not just who has the most money in the bank, though sometimes he puts those two together when we show him that he can trust us. Yeah. Wow. He obviously doesn't need our money at all, but we also understand that finances are a huge language that this world speaks and understands. I have a passion for showing and guiding others on a path towards financial freedom that will continue that must of mine of outrageous generosity by my children and my children's children and others I've taught and helped. Our outrageous generosity creates ripples that we will likely never see, but we know they're there. Wow, Amen. so good. That's, wow. that's beautiful. So uh, the gift that came to mind uh, when I was praying about this question is actually stewardship, and it's pretty broad, but there's a, a core value in our family to 
to leave things better than we found them, to leave people better than we found them. And I think that every relationship we have is a stewardship responsibility. Every uh, resource that we have is a stewardship responsibility. And what I feel like God has given me is, is the ability to take whatever he gives me and I, I'll make it better. And I'll multiply it um, if God gives me, but it's his resources. I have that mindset. It's his resources that I'm dealing with. And I love the, the, the story of the servants and um, I'm committed to using my gift so that when I meet my maker, that he'll say, well done, good and faithful servant. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's good. So I, God has given me an understanding of the way relationships work. I've worked really hard to get to that. I've worked really hard in my own relationship to be authentic and, and use the skills that I teach other people. But I know it operates. I, I watch the evidence of it and, and I'm delighted. I, I love every couple I end up working with and, and, um, and it's not just a job for me. In fact, it's less a job than ever, um, mostly giving away what I do. But, um, but that's definitely a gift that operates in me. Thinking about that, you know, um, that's something I do. It's a service that I give the church. But the thing I, I really want to be mem remembered for is being a worshiper. Mm. I love yeah. to just lift the name of Jesus. Um, and uh, I'm a singer, so I enjoy doing that. I took, this, I took this literal and I realized what my giftings are and they're this, they're leader, teacher, healer. God has raised us up to impact a multitude of lives and to raise up an army to teach them who they are in Christ, what they have in Christ and what's available through the power of the risen Christ. And we have seen, we have literally brought people back into ministry, uh, missionary work and whatever else through healing, through dealing with the, the stuff uh, that has, has held them back, where curses have been placed on them and broken. And we've watched the results of success come in their life and such. Our whole plan is to is been to raise up an army that will know who the enemy is and take him down like the 200 pound canary looking for the kitty. If we have an enemy who's defeatable, yeah. we don't fear him. I just, uh, forgive me, I don't mean to brag, but I just look at it this way. When I wake up in the morning, all hell has a press or board meeting just to figure out how they're going to slow me down. I love it. Too good. Hey, Marty. So for this next question, if you don't mind or if you can, I'd love for you to get out of your seat for this one. Would you mind uh, coming up here? Thank you, sir. Uh, um, if tonight was your last opportunity to give some advice to your kids, let's say you only had a couple minutes, a little extra time. I want you to speak to these men the same way you would speak to your son if it was your last opportunity. What would you say? I'd say that's heavy, first of all. <laughs> but I, uh, I, I prayed a lot about this, and so I thought I, uh, I'd write you guys a letter. Wow. <clears throat> so I thought, I, I felt like he gave me stuff for all of you. Some of this uh, maybe for you, 
and some of it maybe not, right? To take JL's words, if I'm talking to you, I'm talking to you. If I'm not, I'm not, right? So pick the, pick the line that you like and the ones that you don't, right? So, but this is for all of you, Stephen, Don, J.O., Micah, Levi. I love you. I'm proud of you. I expect big things from you. Never forget that you are a powerful person. You get to make choices. You are never a victim of your circumstance. Your circumstances are very real, as we've heard some of those this weekend. But the God of the impossible is on your side. Yeah. So when things get challenging, don't make excuses. Yeah. Lean into him and your relationship with him because that's where character is built. Good choices lead to good consequences. Bad choices lead to bad consequences. Choose the good ones. Always be improving. Always be intentional. Always be present. Choose the most outrageous generosity. They say the devil is in the details, but let's put Jesus in the details instead. Yeah and do the small things right. <clears throat> when you make a mistake, own it. Clean up your messes and make a change. Addiction, abuse, financial irresponsibility, sexual immorality, depression, anxiety, resisting salvation. If you find yourself struggling with any of these things, put an end to it. Get better. You were made in his image and you were made for this. Yeah. None of these things are too big for the God we serve, the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Yeah, I know this because of countless testimonies and because it's in the Bible. It's in his word. It's never too late and you're never too far gone. Were it not for him, I'd be filthy rich and absolutely miserable. <laughs> I believe in you like he believes in you and believe that you can be anything you want to be and accomplish anything you set out to accomplish. You are in this world, but you are not of this world. So establish your mindset accordingly. You are not common. Don't ever forget who you are and whose you are. You, my son, are a son of God. I'm proud of you and I love you. Beautiful. Wow. Um, wow. So good, bro. Wow. Thank you. One of my children is in the crowd, so I get to speak to him as well as all of you, what God put on my heart. So the first thing that came to mind when I was praying about this was uh, to recognize and embrace the seasons of life. And I had, I can't remember exactly, maybe in my early 30s, I had this epiphany that you don't really know what God's doing in your life except for in the rear view mirror. So I kept on looking back and I'd be like, I, will have, I would have just gone through something, I'd be looking back and I'd be like, okay, I see what you're doing with that situation, with those circumstances, with those hardships. Um, and I think that I'd love for my children to know and I think God wants you to know that He's always preparing you for something. Powerful. So God is preparing you now for the future battles and missions he has planned for you. 
You must let the failure and struggles teach you the lessons you need to learn or else you'll repeat them again. That's good. Let the weight of the responsibilities and difficulties strengthen you. Learn as much as you can from trusted godly mentors that God puts in your life. Let God mold you into the instrument you need to be to accomplish his purpose. Don't be surprised. Don't be, su don't be afraid. Don't give up. And I had this realization this morning that um, I think humility versus pride, and I shared this with my small group, humility, I think, makes us like clay and it allows God to mold us. That's good. And I think pride makes us hard like a rock. Mm. And then God has to chisel us. Whoa. Chiseling is very, very uncomfortable. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> and it's also slow, a very slow process. I believe God wants us all to be clay. He'll mold you exactly into what he wants you to be. Dream God-sized dreams. You'll know that they are because they'll only be possible with God. God-given dreams will sometimes seem to die. They'll seem like they're buried. They'll seem like they're fertilized. If you know what I mean? <laughs> Before God brings them to grow into fruition. And that's all because it's his glory versus our glory. He builds faith in us for the next mission through that process. So these are the things I'd ask for you to choose. Choose faithfulness versus fearfulness. Choose purpose over pleasure. Choose courage over comfort. Humility over pride. And engage, don't disengage. So good. I want to say one more thing about just legacy in general and um, that is that your parents cannot guarantee your legacy if you had great parents and they passed on to you all the all the greatest principles and, and whatever that doesn't guarantee that legacy that you'll pass on that's your job here's the other truth whatever your background is can't keep you from leaving a great legacy yeah it just doesn't matter look at the people that jesus starts with mm -hmm. <laughs> his disciples you know uh all of those who have come to christ and hit this room started someplace and maybe it was passed on to them by parent but maybe they came to it just on their own and you know be a little nice to yourself be a little generous with yourself if you're a first generation believer. If you don't have a tradition of, of, you know, things that were just passed to you like for free, then be a little generous with yourself. If you're not like J.O., if you're not like somebody else who's been several generations into this, I've watched, guys, I've watched, and there's a difference. When you see people who are, are fifth generation or third generation, they're different. God set it up. He said, this is a faith that is of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob. If you're an Abraham, be an Abraham. If you're starting this thing out, get to know God and believe him for everything that he shows you. But don't expect that he's going to be able to show you everything that he's, he's showing somebody who's living on several generations of blessing. Please give yourself a break because I don't want anybody in this room or in this, this place to quit because they don't feel like they're go, going as fast as they could or as far as they thought they would. That would be terrible. We need each other. And we need each other so desperately that we got to take each other as we are. Amen. Fight for your brothers. So this is what I wrote. I was thinking about some men I know, and, and I don't have any sons, 
Um, but just the way my, my dad um, passed on some things to me. Short, you already know that you've been handcrafted with God's special, special touch to do, uh, to be and do things he has prepared for you. So spend your life tapping into his grace and power more and more for the rest of your life. You will not be disappointed. I have depended on Jesus Christ. He is the rock you can't be. Point people to him, run to him when you need help everything else is false security i love you but always remember god loves you most of all Amen. so good these have all been very good very good i'm taking it from a little different standpoint because i'm going to take it from what was important to me the greatest legacy my dad gave me was when he laid hands on my head and he spoke into my life. Because what he spoke into my life, over my life has happened, has been fulfilled. If you stop and take a look, remember when Isaac anointed and prayed over, uh, blessed, uh, blah, 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 forgive me, I'm getting all boogered up here. I got about four thoughts all here at the same time. <laughs> <clears throat> when Isaac went to bless Jacob, Jacob was there under false pretenses. Right. Remember? Yeah. When his brother came in, he says, Dad, get it back and give it to me. And he says, I can't. Listen to me, this is important. He said, what I have said has gone out and it will be fulfilled as I said it. Yeah. It was interesting when Jacob blessed his 12 sons, history says every one of the prophecies that he prophesied over his sons came to pass. Wow. We don't understand the power of the blessing. Yeah. Wow. We need to, as fathers and grandfathers, Lay your hands on your on your sons and your daughters and begin to speak life into them and to begin to share what you see by the Holy Spirit needs to be said over them and in them and through them so that you can set it in place. I have one last thing I just want to point out that we don't give value to. The greatest miracle that God ever performed was not when he made the earth. It's when he raised Jesus from the dead because no one was in agreement with him and all hell was against him. But he said, Son, come forth. And he sent the Holy Spirit into Golgotha. And the power that hit the mountain, according to secular history, 24 people walked out of the grave with Jesus. <laughs> That's power. Wow. Now, can I bring it down to you and me? Yes, sir. Romans 8 says, If the power that raised Jesus from the dead dwell in you, does it? Yes. yes. Yeah. That means lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. It didn't say pray over them. It said just touch them. The touch is sufficient to bring healing and change into that person's life. Imagine when you put your hands on your child's head and release the power that raised Jesus from the dead that dwells in you as you prophesy over them and as you proclaim over them and as you establish into their life the things that you want to see happen. That's a legacy you can't miss. Mm -hmm. Wow. Uh, beautiful. Yeah, yeah. Is this powerful, guys? I was thinking about, Derek, as you're reading that letter, when you even said the words, I'm proud of you. I don't ever remember my dad saying that to me. Son, that's why I say those words to you, because I'm intentional. 
And I tell you, I'm proud of you. And I think we need to say that more often. We're more quick to be critical, to point out what's wrong, to point out what you need to correct, rather than speaking life into our kids, into our families. And speak. I'm proud of you. You're a great person. You're a great man. You're a great woman. You're a great wife. You're a great daughter. We need to speak those words, and we need to be intentional. And you know what? Men of the house, we can set that example. How many people would say, you're saying to me right now, you know what? I really think I'm supposed to get water baptized tomorrow. Just stand up where you are right now. Let me see. if there, how, how many in the house say, I'm supposed to get water baptized. I'm laying a stone down. Okay, I, good, good. You're going to meet with Logan, Pastor Logan, right up here when we're done. And if you didn't stand, that's okay. You can come up too. Okay. Tomorrow morning, after water baptism, we're coming back for one final session. We're going to have communion together. We're going to seal the time on the mountain with communion. We're going to put a stone in the ground here. Because something monumental happened this week here with Man Camp. And then our commander-in-chief, J.O., is going to share a word of, of legacy before we go. So can I, here's the last word. Can I ask you not to be done until we're done? Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you not to be done until we're done? Yeah. So uh, maybe, maybe the, can I ask you not to be done <laughs> until we're done? Well, I got about five people. So, can I ask you not to be done until we're done? Thank you. Because here's what we don't want. After the baptism, we don't want people driving away. Well, I got to beat the crowd. No, you don't. Okay, I'm going to have a parking crew out here. They're going to stop you from leaving. No, they're going to help us get out in a timely fashion orderly with no one having an accident and honestly what does 15 20 minutes really mean can, can, can you give can you give i here's our promise to you we'll be done by 10 45 tomorrow morning 10 45 we will be done here so if you will just say stephen we'll commit to 10 45 and then we'll good that way we can have breakfast we can have a water baptism. And there's something about witnessing a water baptism. Yeah, Honey, that'll change your life. Whether you're in the water or whether you're watching it, witnessing it, we will be witnesses under the power of God. And then coming in and, and having communion together, that's powerful. And then J.O. is going to drop a word in our heart. And we're going to go out of here like mighty men. Okay? Okay? And then we can all leave together. And it'll all be good. Thank you in Jesus' name. Okay, let's all stand up. These men are here to pray with you, to pray over you, to speak grace into you, and Marty's going to lead us in some worship.